As I've been building this YouTube channel, I've really struggled with what kind of videos to make, like what's gonna get me the most views. Now I've been told that I'm making videos that are too esoteric, not really the kind of videos people are actually looking for. And that's probably because when I make a video, I'll come up with a general concept, a possible title, and then I'll just start filming. But along the way, I'll find something that's way more interesting to me and I end up making a video that's a bit different than what I set out to make. And then I have a hard time coming up with a good title and thumbnail. But now, I'm gonna switch things up. I've got a plan. I'm going to find a trending topic that people are actually searching for. And then I'm going to come up with a solid title and create my thumbnail before I start filming so that I know exactly what kind of video I'm making. So over the next few days, I spent some time researching trending topics, but I just couldn't find anything that I'm actually interested in. And I'm not going to make videos about things that I'm not passionate about. But then a couple things happen. I went to meet with my friend Zach Hooper, whose singing is featured in my most viewed video to date, so that we could talk about working on some new songs and videos. And he pulls out this weird old Gibson acoustic guitar that he bought from some woman on eBay or something. That's a weird looking neck. Since I'm into old and odd instruments, he lets me take it home to play with, then maybe I can use it on a song or something. Now, during this time, I was mixing an album for an amazing band called Never Come Down. And on several other songs, they had a track labeled Tenor Guitar that had a really cool tone to it. I'd never heard of a tenor guitar before, so I called up their guitar player, Joe Suskin, and asked him about it. And he goes on to tell me, these are four string guitars that go way, way back, that used to be very popular, and he knew a lot of history about it. And I'm like, wait, it's a four string guitar? And he's like, yes. Does it have a small neck? Yes, and I described to him the weird pickup on this thing. And he's like, oh yeah, that was a pickup that was made for these guitars. And I'm like, what are the chances? I looked up tenor guitar on YouTube. There weren't that many videos, but what was there was fairly recent. Now I know it's not exactly a trending topic, but there does seem to be a renewed interest in these guitars. And I figured, hey, I should make a video about them. And besides, I could be one of the first to do a video about an instrument that's gonna surge back into popularity. It's time to implement the plan. So I came up with my title and my thumbnail before I started filming. Now, time to do some research and take notes. However, I was just dying to play this thing and hear what it sounded like, but it just had two old strings and was missing a bridge pin. So off to the music store. I'll do my research later. I dig this store. I was so eager to play this thing, but I figured, let me go ahead and film myself changing the string so I could build up some content. Which is a little thicker than people usually use for tenor guitars, but my intention is to tune it one octave below standard mandolin tuning, which is G, D, A, E, E being the highest note. Tenor guitars are normally tuned to C, G, D, A. But as I was doing all that, I figured, uh, I should probably just go ahead and get some work done. Tenor guitar history, part one, take one. Nobody really knows when the first tenor acoustic guitars were made, but in the mid to late 1920s, Martin and Gibson Guitars started manufacturing acoustic guitars, hmm. but with a I like that. tenor banjo neck attached to it as a way to market but to banjo What if I started up high so and worked my way double on down the, the neck? Guitar without having to learn how to play the six string guitar, because yeah. st six string guitars are oh, yeah. starting to become Much a lot more popular, which had not been up till in that time. I hope now, that I'm going to remember these chords. Made in 1963. It's a model because CG0. I could do something with that. Rare I could take the second it, half of that chord progression and substitute the bass notes. Um, Once I get a musical idea in my head, I can't do anything um, till I get it out. Um, damn, what was I talking about? So I took a few minutes to record the idea so I could move on. Well, like that. Now I had planned on playing this guitar somewhere in the video just to show what it sounded like. I liked what I just worked out, so I figured, ah, I'll just record and film myself playing this. And then I thought, I'll double it. And it could really use a melody. added a lower part. And a 
harmony which led to this bridge. And then Well, looks like I did it again. But hey, on the bright side, I got a new song for my album. Freaking out with Billy Hume. This is a Diarmin, this is a Diarmond pickup. I don't know if I'm saying that right. It was made in the 60s around the same time this guitar was made. It's got this funky volume knob. It's not got a super acoustic-y type sound to it. It's almost electric guitar-y sounding, but I tell you what, it sounds way better than some acoustic guitar pickups I've heard. <laughs> Let's see what it sounds like with an Ebo. Ebo. Let's put some effects on that. A little super massive. Let's add another layer. This is a Gibson tenor acoustic guitar, and as you can see, it's only got four strings on it. The first tenor acoustic guitars were made around the mid to late 1920s by Martin and Gibson Guitar as a way to market to banjo players so that they could double on acoustic guitar because acoustic guitars are becoming much more popular. So what they did was basically stick a tenor banjo neck on an acoustic guitar body, which is why it, this looks a little weird. This one is on loan to me by my friend singer Zach Hooper. It's a model GT0. It was built in 1963 and it's got this rare Diarmond pickup. They're usually tuned the same as a tenor banjo, although a lot of people will tune them an octave down from standard mandolin tuning, which is the same intervals, which is fifths. I've got this one tuned somewhere in between. I'm pretty sure these guitars were meant to be finger picked, but since I can't finger pick, I, I strum. What I really like about these guitars is that they fill a space above an acoustic guitar, but below a mandolin, and it's just got its own sound. 